<laughs> money, baby. Money, money, money. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Price Check. Um, I'm going to be your host, Octavian. Thank you for coming along. Now, I do apologize for the uh, spotty videos in the last three or four days. I think I've missed one or two uploads. Um, I've been a little bit busy with some real-life stuff going on, but, you know, I am back, and we should have daily uploads moving forwards. Barring any further unexpected interruptions. Now, for those of you just joining us on today's episode of the series, I'm going to be grabbing a stash tab full of unID'd gear, I'm going to be browsing through it, and I'm going to be giving my reasoning behind my pricing decisions on said gear, with, of course, the goal being to help you guys learn how to price your own junk. So, let's get started with that, and throw some wisdom scrolls at some of these items here. Now, I have gotten some feedback on the series over the last few episodes, and one of the bigger things that I've heard is that people want me to go a little bit more in-depth as to some of the justifications behind my pricing decisions, um, specifically in regards to what sort of builds out there might want to use the item that I'm pricing. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and cover a bit more in-depth today when I find, like, a good ring or a good helmet or, in particular, some sort of Shaper Touched or Elder Touch piece of gear that's very niche and very specific. I'll, um, I'll be a little bit more in-depth as to which builds exactly in the meta right now might want that. Because one of the advantages of this series as opposed to just a general video that gives you guidelines on how to price something is that I can be topical. I can talk about the current meta because these videos come out daily or every other day or something along those lines. And it is sort of a slice of the the, the current landscape of, of Path of Exile. Um, and so I can go into depth on what specifically, what market specifically I might be trying to sell to with an item. So. This chest piece, however, is not a great start. An Astral Plate, though, is a good base. We've got an eye level 81 Shaper Touched. I think mostly for Astral Plates you want Elder Touched because you can get um, base crit chance and for attack specifically. Shaper Touched chest pieces can get crit chance for spells. Elder, Elder can get crit chance for attacks. Usually an attack-focused build is going to lean more towards wanting Red Sockets. Red Sockets roll more frequently on armor gear, so therefore... Um, an Astral Plate is basically the best armor base, or one of them, because of the all res implicit. So you're looking for an Elder Touched version of this, not a Shaper Touched. But we can ch still check the base and see whether or not my suspicions are correct. As well as that, it's Eye Level 81, which isn't particularly high for a body armor. But let's find out. <coughs> mm, pardon. Still harboring the dregs of a cough, and I'm not sure when it's going to decide to move away, but hopefully it does soon. And yeah, it's maybe 4 or 5 chaos. They start at 1, but they jump up pretty quickly. We could list this at 4, but these have all been up for a week, 6 days, however long. I mean, there's no reason not to put it up, but I do very much doubt that it would sell. <clears throat> Nothing too interesting going on there. We've got a good int roll, a good flat fizz roll. It's on a good base. A diamond base is arguably the best ring base um, outside of the advanced ones like uh, opal and steel. And a decent collection of resistances. However, oh, it does have an open prefix. You could craft life. I don't know if this is worth crafting life onto. The res total is not great. However, the int roll is. Um, and the flat fizz is pretty damn solid as well. And as I said, it is a good base. Hmm. That ring might be worth crafting life onto. Let's take a look. So let's, um, earlier in the league, I definitely would have. I would have jumped at the opportunity to craft life onto this. But now we've been a few months into the league. The market has had time to saturate, and there's fewer people to sell items to. So I'm just not as sure of a sale. Crafted life on jewelry generally isn't very good. Um, let's go with like 40 plus total res. The two res rolls were not so great as to be all that impressive. It was 37 and 10, so we have 57, uh, 47 res. So 40 floor is our res makes sense. Um, we have 8 to 13 physical, which again, the way you calculate that, the, the number you want to put in the path of uh, PoE.trade is the average of that. So we have, what is that? Uh, 21 divided by 2 is sort of 11, around 11. I mean, I guess I could put in 10.5. This can actually handle, you know, decimal places, but we don't need to do that. We can just put in, like, 9. We can have a floor slightly below our physical. <clears throat> and, I mean, we do have one good stat. I think what we're going to do 
is look for one with either dexterity or int over 40. If we look for one with over 40 strength, it'll have a good amount more life than what we're uh, comparing to. And life. Minimum, say, 35, but maximum 50. That's about the crafted range of life. A little bit too specific of a search. Uh, I think we'll keep the diamond ring base. What can we drop from this? Oh, we didn't count. That would do it. Seven results. Crafted life. We're looking at 10C, 12C. How long have these been up? Five days, five days, five days. Two weeks. I think this one's a little bit overpriced. <laughs> Is this one four weeks? Yeah, definitely overpriced. It looks like we could maybe set this up for like 10C and expect to sail relatively reliably. Let's check offline. So, in in the spirit of what I mentioned at the start of this episode, trying to pinpoint a market, what this ring would be selling to, um, the market this ring would be selling to, are people playing maybe facebreaker builds or... Um, actually quite a few different builds. You can use this ring in Facebreaker, obviously. The Flat Fizz is amazing there, but you could also use it with... Um, I mean, Ichimonji comes to mind, Pillar of the Cage God. These are not particularly you know, popular builds, but any, any weapon that has a really powerful effect, but really low DPS. Facebreaker gives you the hundreds of more multi-2 unarmed. So like 700, 800% more multi-2 unarmed attacks. Um, Pillar of the Cage God gives you that percentage extra damage for your strength. Ichimonji gives you all the buff effect. Like, a high utility but low DPS weapon really wants that flat fist. Terminus Est, guaranteed frenzy charges on crit. Very high utility, but rather low DPS compared to other two-handed swords. So you want to augment that with extra flat physical damage added to your attacks. Whereas if you have a high DPS weapon like Starforge or at Ziri's Disfavor, adding that flat fizz is such a small percentage of your overall damage that it's way better to scale your damage with percentage scaling, with more multis and percentage increased damage and the like. Um, I think we'll just craft life on this and put it up for 10c, though. All that aside. Not enough space to accept this trade. All right. Well, we'll keep going through. Mm, some decent cold damage to attacks. <clears throat> and an okay collection of res, but no life. And definitely not worth crafting life on that. And these are just a bunch of junk. Physical damage converted to chaos. Not a role I've seen people really using, though. It's an interesting one. Uh, no, nothing too amazing there. Damage per block chance, again, is a role I have had sell on uh, shields before. And this shield does have very good... Um, block as the base type an ironwood block buckler 26% but it's got just nothing else that makes it sellable no life no resists nothing along those lines immolate minion life I have seen um, that pairing sell decently well as well but again no life no resists <clears throat> no life so it's an okay ring for the most part um, this one is actually pretty comparable, that one that we just checked. It's got a really good stat roll, it's got a damage roll, however that damage roll is much lower. Um, and it's got like a comparable pile of resistances, but it's not in a diamond base. The damage roll is a lot lower. I'm talking about the wed roll, not the cold damage to attacks. The, the cold damage also does matter. And again, crafted life on jewelry is just junk, so we'll get rid of this. This is worth like 4 or 5c from the base. Is it decent otherwise? It's got life, some life gain for each enemy hit, and evasion. Um, <clears throat> it's not horrible. Can you craft a res on that? Yeah, you could. You can craft a res on that. Yeah, we'll take the time to price check that. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what build would really want that 5% base chance to evade attacks, but it's a powerful effect, and this is the only source of that. Obviously, you can scale your evasions in a lot of ways through other methods, but base chance to evade attacks is not something you really find in many places. No life. Same here. And no crit multi, no attack speed, no percentage damage rolls. Well, this one does have a percentage damage roll and an attack speed roll, but that's not quite enough by itself. Well, that's just junk. Corsair swords are good bases, but I have checked these before, and uh, Shaper Touch ones don't sell, even at a decent eye level, which these are both 81. We've got percent area damage, movement skills on no mana cost, some nice utility. Frenzy charge when you block, interesting. Some dual wield 
block shenanigans potentially with that mod. Wow, that's just horrible. As is that. No life. Eh, 44 strength is about the only thing worth anything on that ring. And junk there too. Good amount of Ellie. Good amount of Ellie. Some uh, life. It's a... Oh, it's only a tier 4 fire damage roll. I thought that was a good amount better than that. And that is a tier 1 lightning damage roll, though, which is one people definitely look for for doing a lot of work with Barrage. Yeah, we can check and see if that has any value. Decent Chaos Res roll. Chaos Res doesn't go hi as high as other uh, elemental resistances do. So 21 Chaos Res isn't actually that bad. Like We can check the tier, see how high that is. Where are you? That's tier 3, yeah. And the ranges are not very high, so it's not that far away from tier 2 or even tier 1. But the rest of the ring is not great. 68 life is the only thing that really drew my attention there. And all the rest of that is junk. Okay. Um, yes. And we got two more to look at here. Sadly, both of them garbage. Alright, so this base was going up for 4C. This was going up for 10 after crafting life on it. Which is a little bit of a gamble, because it is a 4C craft. And I'm not hugely convinced that this will sell, but, you know, Int can very often be a problem stat for the kind of build that would want this. You know, something like a Facebreaker Marauder is not going to be very Int heavy on the tree, and might really, really, really value that 47 Int roll to the point where they're willing to take a, a hit in the life department in order to get it. Um, I don't think this ring has much value, but we're going to go ahead and check it. So, it's partially let down by the fact that it's on a very bad base. Power rings are not in high demand. But we have 50 life. We have the, um, no, that's not it. Chance to evade attacks. What the hell is that roll? That is a really interesting roll. Hits with this weapon can't be evaded if you've blocked recently. Huh. Okay. That's neat. And life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. Let's put it in a minimum of 10 because that roll can happen naturally and it's at like 2 or 3, so it's not particularly relevant when that happens. Really? <clears throat> okay. Check offline as well. 9 results. That jumped pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> Pardon my French, wow. Um, what else do we have? Some pretty irrelevant rolls. 7% fire damage and 10 flat ES. How about if we take off the life gain and just try and isolate the value of, of this evasion roll? Plus life. 10, 12, 30... Okay. I think we could put this up. I mean, a lot of those rings were up for a very long time. That were at like 60 chaos or an X or something. So I think we could put this up for like 30. And I'm really tenuous on that price. But I think we can I think we can start it there at least. So I'm honestly not entirely certain what kind of build would want this combination of stats. Um obviously like Queen of the Forest really likes having that evasion chance. If you get Base 5% evasion by itself isn't much, but if you're scaling lots of percentage increased evasion, that base 5% then gets scaled by all that percent increased, and Queen of the Forest is going to do that. I mean, they obviously like use uh, Jade Flask and the like, and they just have lots of percent evasion scaling on the tree, so it does seem like it could find a home, but it's a little bit of an awkward ring. It's not a very good base, it doesn't have anything else really going for it, it's got space for a res, right? Yeah. So we may as well go ahead and craft an all res roll onto this. And you know what? I wasn't considering that in the original price, so we're just going to put it up for 40 instead. We're going to see whether or not that sells. I wouldn't be surprised if I have to lower it plenty of times, or if it sells immediately. I'm, I'm really not certain on the price on this one. But that's what these episodes are for. Alright, the next thing I wanted to check was this jewel. It's got 33 life. Is not particularly high as far as jewels go. Eh, well, let's not put in like the literal value. 30 is our floor. Um, 
6 to 71 lightning damage, so that's 77 lightning damage, which is 38 average, sort of. Yeah, 38 is just about. Um, and 12 to 20 is 32, so that's 16 average fire and 38 average lightning. I think the lightning is the much more important roll. So we'll just put in like 35 average lightning. Um, and we'll see what that's worth by itself. It's going to be a lot, right? 125 results. We're looking at 10C just for the lightning damage roll in the life. Which is a good start. And then add a filter group. Fire damage to bow attacks. Obviously since we have that, but... What, what was it again? Yeah, 16 was our average. So we'll just put it in like... 14. We'll undercut it a little bit. Cold damage to bow attacks because the fire damage and like cold damage or even just cold damage to generic attacks or fire damage to generic attacks, these are all pretty much interchangeable. We'll be a little bit lower on these because these rolls just roll a bit lower to begin with. Now I'm actually not going to put in lightning damage to attacks because I feel like that is more valuable because it causes shocks more often is the main reason. And lightning damage also has higher ranges, so if you're firing a lot of barrages, the the wide range is not as bad a problem as if you're landing one big heavy hitting attack because you know you're rolling against that wider range average more often, and so you're going to be hitting average rolls in the middle more often as well. That makes sense. Um, but what we want to do is we want to count one of these. So generally speaking, wanders and bow builds are going to scale lightning damage preferentially to other deli types. We're looking at uh, 35, 35, 40. What's the fourth mod on this? Movement speed if you haven't taken damage recently. Actually sometimes relevant, um, especially for a bow build. So we can sort of consider that to be like about as valuable as maybe this 2% dodge or this 3% onslaught. I'd say the onslaught is more useful. Um, but we can probably put this thing up for, like, an exalt, I think. I think that's pretty reasonable. So we'll go ahead and do that. And really, that that lightning damage to bow attacks roll is what's giving this value T1 plus a bunch of other usable rolls, and one of them is life. Um, but it's the lightning damage to bow attacks that's really carrying that jewel. That's for sure. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Pretty good start. You know, I like when I have to go and price check like five things from the first inventory's worth. It means we've got some interesting items. <clears throat> so and I hope I've been going into uh, suitable depth. Feedback is critical, so if you've got any questions or comments or feedback on the series, then please do leave them in comments below the YouTube video. I do read them all, even if I don't respond to every single one. Uh, no life. Bad resists. No life. 23 life. A similar ring to our first um, our first diamond ring of the day, but this is not a diamond base, so I'm not going to craft life on it. I don't even know if I can, actually. That might be full upon prefixes. No, it's not. I could, theoretically, but it's not a diamond base. Base crit for spells, life and a resist. Um, I bought a chess piece for my Inquisitor <clears throat> that had that level of base crit for spells. It was about 0.89, I think, so very similar. Um, it had a hundred life and two resist rolls that added up to close to what that res roll is. So I think we could list this for maybe eight to ten chaos because the one that I bought was 20c, but it had two res, better life, and then the, the spell crit mod. Um, it was also a better base. So I think we can put this up for like eight or ten c. <laughs> Though there may not be as many people looking for them um, because the, the chess piece had been listed for like a week or two before I bought it, so... Maybe it doesn't sell, but it's not going to hurt it to list it. Physical is extra damage of random element. The only really relevant mod there. 50 life, not enough. Wed, I guess. Nothing nothing really doing there. A uh, good collection of stats, but no life and mediocre resist. We've got some flat cold dispels, life and a cold res roll. I've not priced a helmet yet with flat cold added dispels, so I'm not sure what it's worth. Um, I think we'll hold on to this and check it. Um... Doesn't have a free suffix, so we wouldn't be able to craft another res on it, which would have added a lot of value. Um, there are two bad suffixes, 18 int and 14 rarity, if it turns out the flat cold damage to spells roll is really good, but, you know, not so good. Like, it's it's right in the middle on really good um, in the spectrum there. If it's good enough that with two res, it'll be a really valuable item, 
but not good enough that with one res it's really valuable? I might have known this. We'll see. <coughs> I think it's a decent candidate for it. Uh, that'll just probably sell for the base. Elder Touched, what level are you? I-82. Yep. Amethyst is not a great base, but it's not horrible. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus, that is a lot of int. Holy crap. 65. <laughs> That's 94 int. And, you know, I think that's T1 crit multi for amulets. Um, and a really good life roll. Well, not a really good. An acceptable life roll. Very much an acceptable life roll, considering there's also 34 strength on that? No, 44. 44 strength on that, so that's 22 life. Yeah, that's 80-something life. 37 multi and 90 plus int. Wow. I was talking earlier about how like facebreaker builds and just generally crit builds on the left side of the tree can often be starved for int or attack builds on the bottom of the tree even. There's, there's crit builds all over the tree. Crit's pretty good. Um, so I'm sure there's plenty of builds that would love to have this much int on their amulet slot and be, would be willing to drop resistances for it. Um, I mean, we could... I was going to say we could annul this. No, all the suffixes are good. So if there was a bad suffix on that, I would be very slightly tempted to annul it, but no. No, we don't, we don't want to hit that multi or the 50 int or something. I don't know what that's worth, but we're going to definitely check that bad boy. That is a nice looking amulet. No life. Aside from the implicit, no life. Kong effect, minion life. Area damage, fire. Eh. No. Harlequin mask isn't good enough to sell as a base either. 60 life. Some cast speed. Interesting. Not good enough to craft life on. 64 life, not enough to save it from not having other good stats. Some LE to mace attack, 60, uh, 74 life, not good enough by itself. Um, doesn't have any damage rolls. It is on a diamond base, which is good, but it doesn't have any damage rolls. has very unimpressive resistances. Hmm. That's not horrible. Um, I don't know of any ES builds in the meta right now that want that flat fizz, but ES builds generally do want strength as they're often lacking on that, um, being on the top right or right side of the tree. Um, and it does have an okay collection of res and a good ES roll, as I'm saying. So we could maybe list that for like 8C. Hope for it to sell to some niche build that I'm not thinking of. That is some sort of low-life attack build. I don't really think that that's going to pop up too often. We are long since past the meta of Crown of Eyes. But hey, there's no harm in listing it. I'll put this up for 8 as well. We're going to go ahead and check this helmet. And check that amethyst base. So, amethyst base is pretty easy to check. We'll do that first. Am I spelling amethyst wrong? I thought it was A-M... No, it's A-M-E. God dang. How many times have I seen that, that word in this game now? It's I level 82. It was Elder. It's not really worth anything at all. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and vendor that. Feels bad. Vendoring a high eye level elder touch ring. Anyways, helmet. So let's try and isolate the value of that cold damage roll. So what we're going to do, because it, it won't have any value by itself, so it'll have value potentially with life. So we're going to look for something with 70-ish life, which is what we have, and cold damage to spells. That's a shape mod. Um, I mean, I don't really think we have to put in our average, but we can. It's close to that. All right, so the roll itself isn't worth all that much. There's a few up for like 1C that could have a crafted res on them, and that's about the level of our resistance is 21. Um, it does jump to 5C pretty quickly, and this is actually really similar to ours, but we've got plus one base crit chance to socketed spells. This has worse res. We could put it up for like 5 chaos and let it sit there for a day and maybe try and make us money, but I don't think it'll sell. You'll notice I, I have a lot of items listed like that. Honestly, 80% of what I list, I don't anticipate selling too quickly, if at all. But very often, they do end up selling at a price maybe a few chaos under what I listed them at. And I lower things day by day by 1C until they get down to my 4C tab, then I vendor them. Um... So there's, there's no harm in doing that. There's no reason not to give an give an item an opportunity to sell for you. I mean, obviously, if it is absolute junk, just vendor it. And that's what the price checking process is about. It's really about we, um, weeding out the, the, the junk from what you pick up. But even something that's half decent, 
you may as well list. You may as well get the opportunity to get a few chaos out of it. You never know. Um, so let's look for an amulet. And let's just look for an amulet with like 90 plus int and life and see what we find. <laughs> we'll just start with that. So what have we got? We've got 60 life as our baseline. I mean, we've actually got 80 something life with the stats, but we can be a little bit generous because we're looking for over 90 int. So let's see. 16 results. All right, so those vary pretty widely in price. Starting at 5C, we go up to like a few X. Let's throw in the crit multi-roll. I think that's the next most relevant thing. So let's go with like over 30 crit multi. Let's see what we find. Nothing. Online at least. Let's check offline. Two results. Looking at 5X. This has worse life than ours. By a good margin actually. Um, I mean, we even have 9% wed, not that that's that relevant. This one has the 25% spell damage. This this one, I would say, is a better amulet than ours. It's a bit more tuned to an ES build, I guess, because they crafted that percent ES on it. But I think 5x is a bit much. Here, let's lower some of these rolls. Um, let's bring the int down to, like, 75 15 results. This one's pretty comparable. It's got a res instead of our wed roll, but they're both pretty meh and relevant to one another, I suppose. It's been up for a month on 145 chaos, but maybe that's just because this guy hasn't come online in a month. It's kind of hard to, to judge when you're looking at offline searches. When you have an item that's this specific, you kind of have to do that. Um, I think we can start this thing at 3. 3x. And then lower it. Just judging by the competition. 112 life, 86 and 31 multi. This one's actually really similar to mine. It's up for 2x. Yeah, I think we can start at 3 and then lower it. It has a bit of mana as well for a mind over matter build if there's one that would want all these stats. Which, who knows, there might be. Alright. Interesting episode so far. It is a fairly niche item. Um, whoever buys this would be paying a premium for that int, but for some builds, that int is definitely worth that premium. Um, I mean, you may even buy this for like an int stacking build. This is perfect for Howa if there's a Howa build out there. Um, you've got 37 crit multi, you've got a decent life rule, you've got all that int. Um, that's like as much int as a badly rolled astromant, as an okay rolled astromant is even. And then you get all the, you know, other all attributes and even a little bit of wed, which isn't very good, but I guess does scale. Not that Howen's particularly pro uh, popular right now, but this would have been worth a lot a few metas ago. As it is, it's still worth a good amount, I would say. So there you are. All right, fifty life. That is a literal perfect life roll. So that gets my attention. We've got some flat. LE to spells. Okay, yeah, that's probably worth something just by dint of the life roll and the rest of the stats not being horrible. Mana regen while moving doesn't seem particularly relevant, but flat damage to spells can be good. Uh, the rest of this is pretty much junk. Okay. So we're going to see what the worth of a 50 life roll is on a jewel, just by itself. Do, do, boop. 50. Search. It's going to be a lot of results. 1,000 results. Okay. So it's like a few chaos for the 50 life. Now let's put in... Well, I think that cold damage to spells roll is actually pretty good, right? Yeah, that's a tier 2. 15 to 23, that is 38, which is 19 average. Put in like 15 average cold damage, not to attacks. To spells. 15 results. We're looking at 15, 20 chaos, and that's with just one to spells. And we have another pretty mediocre fire damage to spells while dual wielding mod. But it is another 10 average alley to spells. So I think we can put it up for like 
I don't know, maybe not an X. These are starting to get a bit better than ours. We can put it up for like 50C though, I think. Alright, we'll go ahead and list that. Okay, well. This has been an interesting episode. A lot more good items than usual. Not that I'm complaining. And a lot more opportunities to learn as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you did learn something. A thing or two. And uh, as well as that, I hope you've got some feedback for me. Because this was a slightly longer episode. Because I tried to be a bit more in-depth on some of my descriptions of these items. And if that was something you enjoyed. If that was something that helped you out. Then please do let me know. And if that was something that annoyed you. And you don't want me to do that in the future. Then let me know that as well. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please do feel free to subscribe here on the YouTube channel or follow me on Twitch. There's a link in the description below. I do stream every day. And I will see you all in the next one.